Hey, Steve Zook. Welcome back to Pokesu Channel and the Guitar Leader System. Hey, like I mentioned in the last video, I've really been into um, Yamaha guitars lately, and I'm really into nylon string right now. I own a lot of nylon string guitars. And I'm actually a bit unique. I mean, I'll actually buy things just to learn about them, and I've bought a lot of Yamaha classical guitars. I've bought a lot of steel strings too lately, but I've bought a lot of nylon strings, some made in Japan, some made in uh, China, some made in Korea, some made in Indonesia, some made in Taiwan. And I'll tell you, man, you know, some of the Japanese ones sound great. Some of the, the ones made in Taiwan sound great. Some of the ones made in China sound great. I mean, they're, they're, it's like Chet Atkins said, every guitar is a little bit different. But uh, I, I love I love Yamaha guitars and they, they know a lot of secrets to making acoustics, but a great guitar can come from anywhere. Um, like I said, I mean, I, I really love the Made in Japan guitars by Ibanez and Yamaha and Aria and people like that, but a lot of Korean guitars are great. You, you just can't, it's not black and white, you just can't say, oh, every guitar made in China is a piece of shit, you know, or every guitar made in Taiwan or Indonesia. I, I just gave my son a really beautiful Samet Classical that sounds just beautiful. It's made in Indonesia. It's an older one. It's got aged wood and aged binding and a beautiful mahogany back solid spruce top and it's really a nice guitar and he's pretty stoked i gave it to him for his uh, 30th birthday which is coming up in a couple months but i thought i'd give it to him before i changed my mind right but my point just being you know uh and this is a good an education for me like i said i bought you know a lot of nylon string guitars from and uh, a great guitar can come from anywhere uh, i do love the made in japan stuff anyway but what i want to talk about is do next have a memory this, this is a Yamaha guitar I just recently bought, actually. And it, this one is made in Japan. It is Nippon Gaka. And by the way, you know, a, a lot of great Nippon Gaka guitars uh, out there are not just the FG-180. You know, there's a lot of stuff made, you know, Nippon Gaka guitars that uh, are just really special. But again, you have to take every guitar on a guitar-by-guitar -guitar basis. If you start selling yourself on blanket statements like every blah, 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 blah is a great guitar, you know, every... A great guitar can come out of you know anywhere um i even bought a guitar once that was made by a guy that was in prison for like 30 years and i think he only made a few guitars i forget the guy's name but it was really cool a really a cool guitar i could tell he put his his uh, blood sweat and tears and love into the guitar and and i think somebody actually emailed me that knew the guy and, and i don't think he did anything you know really terrible that he went to jail for um, I, I don't know the particulars and I don't really give a shit, you know, but I just thought it was cool that, you know, I, I got to have the guitar for a while and, and, uh, the guy that bought it really appreciated it, you know, but th this, this is a Nippon Gaka nylon string and I was attracted to it because I'm, like I said, I'm really into, really into nylon string right now. I'm doing a lot of composing on nylon string. I might do a CD and, uh, I do a lot of stuff in a flamenco tuning where you make the G and F sharp and you make the low E a D. And it's, I got that from Carlos Montoya, the great flamenco player. And it's really a neat tuning. It's got some really nice sounds. But this is a Nippon Gaka. It is made in Japan. And uh, I, I, I think I got it a, about a week and a half ago. And uh, I'm letting it rest. I, I took the strings off of it um, to let the neck kind of, uh, you know, go back to what I feel is, is, is a great place for the neck to be. Uh, it had a little more bowing than I, w I was happy with, and uh, it, it actually had, you know, uh, three steel strings on it and three nylons, and that's better than having six steels on it, right? But the neck's looking pretty good. And by the way, a neck doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Uh, I know a lot of players that like a little relief in the neck. This, neck's, this neck looks a million times better than it did when I got it. And when I got it, I just took the strings right off, and uh, let it just kind of rest and sometimes necks have a memory and they go back and, and this is a nylon string so it doesn't have a truss rod i've also recently bought guitars i don't do this a lot but bought a a, a guitar that that uh, had uh, way too much tension on the strings and really thick strings so i took them off and i've been adjusting the neck when it, when i have a neck that needs a little attention i i tend to adjust it a couple times a day like once in the morning and one late once later in the day and I just, you know, and then I let the guitar rest for 24 hours and then I do it again. And I'll do that every day for like, you know, 10, 11 days. 
and it can be a, a real effective way to do it. I, I, I think it settles in better if you do a neck adjustment all at once. And I know people can argue with me about this. I'm not looking to argue with anybody or I'm not looking to sell you on that I'm right. I'm just trying to share information. But my theory, my theory is, is that when you do adjustments over time, it kind of helps the, the neck get used to it, you know, because if you do it all at once, it's kind of an abrupt change. If you do it a little bit of, at a time, the truss rod has a chance to kind of settle in, the wood settles in, it kind of, you kind of give the guitar neck a chance to kind of acclimate to, to a new tension and a new climate. And, and I even do a thing with guitars where I'll take a shower and then when, when there's like, when, when, you know, 60, 70% of the steam and the moist air is gone, I'll walk into the shower with the guitar and just stand in there for, you know, five or 10 seconds and let the guitar absorb just a very small amount of moisture. Again, I, there's not, there's not much moisture in the, in the, sh in the bathroom when I do that. And I don't stay in there long and I flip the guitar upside down, but I'm just trying to, I'm trying to give the guitar just, a, and I live by the ocean, which helps as well. But, uh, but you have to be careful. You don't want to do that too much. You don't, you don't want it to get too much moisture that could pop a, pop a brace or something. But just a, you know, a little bit is better sometimes, you know. But this neck is way, way, way better than it was. And I can't wait to put strings on this. Because I'm just damn curious <clears throat> what it sounds like. Every guitar, like Chet Atkin said, every guitar sounds a little different. By the way, if you like my channel, hit the subscribe button. I should, I should have a lot more subscribers. I don't push it real hard, though. But just if you could hit the subscribe button, I'd appreciate it. But I'm really looking forward to how this guitar sounds. And I, I'm really tempted to put strings on it now. But I can tell the neck is just, you know, is really doing beautiful. It's, it's just a ton better than it was when I got it. And my theory, again, on this is that once the neck kind of returns to a normal, kind of has a memory and returns, I want it to lock in a little bit. I'm thinking like if, if the neck, you know, gets back to really close to normal and then I put strings on it, it might pull the neck back to where it was before or close to where it was before or just take away some of the adjustment that had naturally occurred. So I think I think when you're letting a, a guitar neck kind of, you know, go back to have a memory and go back to being more straight, um, it's good to, to let it, you know, kind of settle in because the neck was completely different and then it starts getting better and you kind of want that to lock into itself that's my theory at least so uh, I'm not looking to sell anybody on my theory but I think there's some validity to it because if a neck has, has had had you know some pretty bad bowing for a while that's kind of in its DNA so to speak you know so if you adjust the neck every day and then like in a nylon string like this and since you can't adjust it you just let it rest you know, the, the ocean air is good for it, puts a little moisture. You walk into the bathroom when, you know, 70% of the moisture is gone and you just, you know, walk into the bathroom with a guitar and let it, you know, absorb for maybe 10 seconds, you know, do that once a day or so. But just be careful you don't be in there too long and you don't have too much steam. And then I always leave the guitar out after I do that. But I'm really looking for it. I can tell this guitar is going to have some really beautiful tones. It's a bit rough. You know, it's got a mark here. I don't give a shit. I bought it because I was just damn curious what it's going to sound like. It's got a, a bunch of scratches right here. But it is Nippon Gaka. This one is made in Japan. I think it's going to sound beautiful. I can already I can already kind of hear it. I love the way the where the, the top is aged. I'm pretty sure this one's from the 60s or 70s. Uh, might be 70s, could be late 60s, but uh, you know, like I said, I just I have a lot of Yamaha classical guitars. I have a lot of classicals in general. Uh, I keep most of them at my studio up north in Ventura, under lock and key, with a Navy Seal guarding the place. It's a long story, but <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, so you know, if you have a neck, if it's a steel string guitar, you know. Uh, Adjust it if the neck is, is pretty severely bowed. My suggestion is, is do a small adjustment in the morning and a small adjustment hours later and then do it every day. You know, don't do it all at once because because I, in my theory is the neck needs to resettle in. The truss rod's going to shift. The neck's going to shift because it, it's been the same way for so long. So give it a chance to readjust. Give the, give the, the wood a chance to readjust and acclimate. And the same thing on a nylon string. Like I, I'm probably going to, this is probably going to be three weeks, but by the time I I feel comfortable that the, that the, because the, the, the new neck position, I, in my opinion, needs to reset. 
and I, I don't mean that with glue. I mean it just, it just it, you know it, it was it was a lot more abode. It's gotten a t it's gotten ninety percent better, and so once it gets better, I feel like it needs to lock into itself. It needs to uh, kind of get used to being more straight, and then um, kind of like lock into itself. If that makes any sense, the molecular structure and the tension and everything else. So uh, I can't wait to hear this guitar. I was almost tempted last night to put strings on it, but my gut's saying, wait another week, you know, at least, you know. But I just, I love Yamaha guitars. There's, there's a lot of really great Yamaha acoustic guitars, like I said, that, that are not Nippon Gaka, that are not made in Japan, and they, they sound tremendous. So I, I think there's a lot of people that don't realize how great a lot of the Yamaha guitars are. And uh, but anyway, this this guitar I'm really looking forward to uh, getting strings on it and hearing it, you know, because like I said, I've got a lot of nylon string guitars and they all sound a little bit different. It's so interesting, you know. Like Chet Atkins said, no two guitars are exactly the same. You know, they absorb different kind of nutrients from the ground, and the, you know, the climate they've been in, how much they've been played. It's just a really interesting thing. So I'm probably getting to the end of my nylon string buying. I'm running out of room to put them all. But uh, I just love, I'm really into nylon string. I just love the tone of it. And uh, so I'm looking forward to hearing this one. But yeah, the neck is so much better on this. So I want it to get a little bit better and then I want it to lock into itself. And I want the wood to kind of get used to how it is right now before I put new, new more t before I put tension on it with a set of strings. So, all right. So yeah, Yamaha acoustic guitars, man. There's a lot of value there. There's a lot of great, great old world value. And uh, anyway, okay, folks. If you wanna, if you're interested in something I have, best thing to do is text me seven one four five four eight zero three eight five, or um. You can uh, email me, stevezook7 at yahoo.com, S-T-E-V-E-Z-O-O-K, -E -O -O the number seven, not spelled out at yahoo.com. All right, take care. Let's all keep the positive faith, guys, guys and girls. Let's keep the positive faith. The universe is perfect by design. I don't want to argue about that. But, uh, you know, if it wasn't for a bunch of assholes out there that really don't give a shit about people and people in their country or other places, the earth would be a really beautiful place. And the earth is a beautiful place, but a lot of the problems we have are because of, of assholes that don't have a spiritual consciousness. They don't realize we're all one. Their egos are way out of control. Uh, but you can't let that sour you to life. Life is still full of unlimited possibilities. Your life is not over. Don't be a victim. Uh, be a conscious co-creator. Consciousness is not localized. There's no limit to what you can create. But try to focus on joy, you know, like e even for no reasons. Just don't be so results oriented. Try to try to resonate joy within your soul and, and try to resonate joy in your frequency and your vibe. And that will attract more to you. Happiness is the way. I think Wayne Dyer said that. The more joyful you are, the more uh, positive things will happen in your life and learn to uh, have an attitude of gratitude you know, thank the universe for the beautiful sky. Thank the universe for a beautiful tree. Thank the universe for the smile of a, of a beautiful child or person or older person or whatever. And re realize that every second you're creating, every second you're, you're creating, whether you're creating prosperity, abundance. And by the way, I don't think it's always about chasing goals as much as it is aligning with goals. You can, And by the way, you can align with prosperity and abundance. It's not so much, I'm not saying you just sit around and eat guacamole all day but a lot of it has to do with, with what your subconscious mind believes. You know, believe it, have it, doubt it, do without. Ciao.